It's the start of the morning rush in Durban, South Africa. Under the system of white supremacy called apartheid, Africans were prevented by force from living in the city. But as apartheid weakened, they moved in and built suburbs of shacks. This is Foreman Road, home to 7,000 people. Clearing the slums is the authorities' rallying cry. But if that means leaving the city, most shack dwellers don't want to go. People have their reasons why they are squatting in the city. People are not stupid. It's not that people who like to live in the shacks. No one will ever want to live in these conditions. But they need to be closer to their working places. They are here to access education, health care, and better services. So people are here for a reason. They cannot allow anyone to move them because they are in cities to access better life. Post-apartheid South Africa has one of the few constitutions in the world that make adequate housing a citizen's right. When democracy started in 1994, Durban's 800,000 or so shack dwellers put their faith in the African National Congress, the former liberation movement. Now, however, they've started their own movement. Abashlali Bazem Jondolo, literally the people of the shacks, is voluntary and community-based. Its slogan is, talk to us, not about us. Leaders often want to be listened to. They still do not understand what democracy is. They will think democracy is about us giving them respect. It's about us listening to them and without us having a voice. For the first time, the poor now are beginning to speak for themselves. Now that threatens those in higher authorities who are paid to think for us, who are paid to speak for us. In September 2007, Abashlali members marched to the local municipal office with a memorandum of demands. The march was legal. Abashlali had notified the police in advance and had permission to be on the streets. They'd asked the mayor, Obed Mlaba, to receive their memorandum in person. They and the Anglican and Methodist bishops who were with them waited for him. There were church leaders there. We were free and happy. When we were busy praying, we closed our eyes. Before we even say amen, they pour us with water. Running, they started to shoot us. I am one of the people who were got six rubber bullets in my body. Since I was born, I never, ever, ever had a pain like that for that night. Our government from South Africa, a woman of my age, 54 years, I didn't break anything. After that, they arrest us. The they say we're making a, it's a, a violence. They open a case for a violence, public violence. For that thing they done to me, I'm not stopping to fight for government for my rights. Now they make me brave. I'm not turning back anymore. The shack suburb of Kennedy Road was hacked from the bush in the 1980s and is on land owned by the state. But life here is insecure. Residents have no rights of tenure. The local authorities treat them as transient, even though several generations have grown up here. The official policy of the National Housing Department is that shack settlements should be upgraded. But national policy is implemented by provincial governments and municipalities 
and other Schlali members have campaigned in vain for the municipality to upgrade Kennedy Road. These checks are, are, for, the, are for people. We are not animals. We are just people like them that work in the municipal offices. Some 7,000 people live in Kennedy Road and need basic services. But Abishlali activists are battling on the most elementary of issues, like lavatories. Almost plus or minus 500 people are using this one toilet. Males and female and children are sharing one and the same toilet. The municipality supplies five of these chemical lavatories. It's also built a number of pit latrines. In March 2008, Abishlali said they hadn't been emptied for over a year. Then there's a battle over rubbish collection. This refuse must be collected by the municipality once a week. Sometimes they don't come. We fought very hard to get the refuse back. And now we, now we have every time to find them and remind them that they're supposed to do it. And now just imagine, do you think, do you think how close we are to that, to that dumping ground? But now they are leaving all this refuse here that they can manage to collect within three, three minutes. And they are always complaining that the shack dwellers are, 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 not, are not clean. This is the main municipal dump for Durban. Kennedy Road grew up right next door to it. With so many thousands of people living here, you'd think the public health authorities would be doing everything to improve sanitation and safety. You'd be wrong. There's no lights here, there's no street lights. So you cannot get touched during the night. It's not safe because it's dark. One is to urinate in a bucket in the shack there. Then now it's so difficult for one to go carrying urine from just mm. half a kilometer up there. Mm. You see, from one shack dwelling at the bottom up there. So and people will think you are mad. Mm. So it's just better for me to come out of my shack and I just throw out the urine. <laughs> In South Africa, the biggest killer of one to five-year-olds is diarrhea. These shack dwellers aren't rate payers, but they are citizens. This water is part of the water that comes from the top there. Look at the children. Children are eating. and They're having their breakfast in front of the eating. We are tired of eating in these filthy conditions. We are tired of a fight without a win. We have not even seen one big guy coming to address us here. They just move in good cars when they go to the parliament. They must bring those briefcases and try to address the service delivery system here. Millions of South Africans that are living in the informal settlements are being marginalized, are being forgotten. The president of the country, the premiers, are so far, they are so high enough for them not to see the ground. But what about this local government? What about the municipality, the city managers and the mayor? Why they are so blind to our suffering? How long will people live in these conditions, you know, without any ear that is prepared to hear? Durban is part of a huge post-apartheid municipality called Eteguini, which appears to be nailing its development hopes to the 2010 Soccer World Cup. Eteguini is building a state-of-the-art stadium come shopping mall at a cost of 2.6 billion rands. It's the centerpiece of a drive to make Durban a world-class city. Sihle Sibisi an Abashlali activist, is unimpressed. He's lived for some 20 years in this shack, or John Dolo, alongside his neighbor, Mariette Kikina. She's the woman who was shot six times by the police in the back. Our government has got plenty of money to renew the airport and the big money for building the stadium. No money for the poor people, but when they want the vote, where they go first is the John Dolo. As we are poor, we are going to poor and poorest. 
those people who are who are rich they're also richest after the 2010 because now when we are when we are not getting the housing this year next year they are not care about us because it's going to an election and after election it's going to an uh, a 2010 world cup after in 2010 world cup there is a, a world cup cricket after world cup cricket is a world cup rugby so what we what we what we say for this year five year plan where we fit it for the for the city municipality where we fit it in the years immediately after the end of apartheid durban council actively supported the city's poor including shack dwellers the emphasis changed in 2001 when the enlarged municipality adopted a less sympathetic policy of slum clearance. Attitudes continue to harden. The provincial government has recently passed a law that criminalizes the building of shacks. What's happening now in Kennedy Road seems very like a war of attrition against the shack dwellers. The municipality came, came here and cut the wires. They're telling us that it is illegal connection, but as you can see, these poles are put in by the municipality themselves. They, they just want to justify that the shake dwellers are stealing electricity. Shake dwellers cannot consume more electricity than the mines. Do you think these shake dwellings can consume a lot of electricity, making the whole country go dark in the process? I don't think so. There is a policy that prohibits the electrification of any informal settlements in the city. But that particular policy is a killer. So many people, people have been killed by the fact that they cannot access electricity. They have to use these paraffin stove which often explodes and, and candles. And just imagine how many floodlights are there look, at, at, look at, at one power station. There's at least three to four floodlights just for a small station like this. But we don't have even a single one, a single flat light here in these shake dwellings. If they can afford to put lights there, why can they afford to put lights here to the people? This is the kind of suburb where the ratepayers live. These areas used to be for whites only. Now they're open to anyone with money to buy. Much more money than before. In seven years, property prices rose 200%. This in a city where 40% of working age adults are unemployed. We know that this country has enough resources for its citizens, and we know that this country is rich, and we know exactly what makes it rich. The fact that we are kept in these settlements, it's a one factor that makes it rich. The fact that our poor people have to walk and, and work in, in the kitchens and laundries of the rich people makes this country rich, and it makes the city rich. It's a part of the continuous struggle, so we're just saying our unity is our own strength. In Foreman Road, the local development committee has joined Abashlali Bazem Jondolo. For what? To, to housing uh, developments. Nikelo Dabankulu, a shack dweller in Foreman Road, is a volunteer activist in Abashlali. The movement is driven and sustained by the energies of unpaid organizers like him. But coming out as an Abashlali activist means coming out as a shack dweller. And more than ever in South Africa, there's stigma attached to living in a shack or John Dolo. One of the main objectives of Abashlali is to is for people to get confidence and pride of their communities. Some people even fear to say that I'm staying in a chandra. They see that as a shame or as an embarrassment to stay in a shack. But uh, we have to build that self-confidence. We have to accept that you are poor and then we can try to get alternatives on how to change our lives. 
in my man. Oh, no, no. When you say I'm staying here, then you are here and you're fighting for, 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 for the development of where you are staying. If you cannot stand up and fight for a house, you are going to hide for life now. We said this government must build houses for us here. We are not just fighting for houses general, we are fighting for houses in the city. The municipality of Eteguini is in fact spending millions of rands building new houses. The problem is it's doing so without consulting shack dwellers and in places they can't afford to live because public transport isn't subsubsidized. Shack owners in Foreman Road have been told they might have new houses in Verulam. Verulam is a rural area 27 kilometers from here and this man can't afford to live there. He's working around here, a 30 minutes walk from here to his workplace. But if uh, he might stay in Verulam, he has to take a train from Verulam to the city and then from the city he has to take a taxi. So his income will be spent on transport. The transport, if you're going in Verulam, if I'm working in uh, someone here, our neighbor, it pay mainly 20 rand a day. So how much more am I going to spend to come this side here to do my craft? So that's a thing I don't like to go that side. Poor people will resist any relocation without their, their, their consent. Mm -hmm. So the key issue here is about people being consulted. If you consult people, then you show that you respect them. If you force them to live wherever you feel like without their consent, people of course will not say no to houses. They will take their house, but they will either rent it out or sell it and they run back to, to the shack. That is the huge problem that our government is facing, but because it cannot respect and listen to us, it will always face this problem. Government is always trying to relocate people to far away places like Verulam, Park Gate, Bord Moria, which is costing too much on transport cost since the petrol is rising day in, day out. So we do not want to even hear the issue of relocation, we want upgrading and development where we are currently staying. People get involved in Abashlali Bazim Jondolo because it helps them stay where they are currently staying. This is what's left of the shack suburb of Matala Heights. In October 2006, a municipal demolition squad arrived here unannounced and started breaking up houses though they were themselves breaking the law because they didn't have a court order. <laughs> Through Abashlali and the Legal Resources Centre, the residents got a high court interdict that halted the demolitions. They're resisting relocation to a municipal housing development some miles away. Their poor Indian neighbours are also under pressure, and some have joined Abashlali. The municipality's housing development called Nazareth Island cost at least 20 million rands to build. These residents say the ANC ward councillor has called them animals and told them they should go back to the farm. Ngafika <laughs> 
These are modest enough ambitions, but there's no sign they'll be realized, even though the Matala Heights settlement is on land owned by the municipality. A powerful local businessman wants the land for a private housing development. It seems the shack dwellers are in the way. Impola is an old apartheid era township, not a shack settlement. But all's not well here either. This homestead is scheduled for demolition by the municipality, who say the land is needed for something else. Residents say this is part of a pattern of arbitrary behavior by the local councillor. Those who are receiving services are those who are friends and relatives of the councillor and uh, his committee. Yes, not the whole community. And, and are also those who belong to the same party the councillor belongs to. If you're not in the same party, yes. it means you're not going to get the services. Yes. But how come in, in the same... The councillor in question belongs to the ANC. This man, former ANC Kader Mbongeni Madlala, says he recruited him. Now Madlala is an activist in Abashlali. Many of uh, Abashali members are from the ANC. Why are they in Abashali? Yes, because they are fed up of these uh, empty promises by the leaders. In Impola, the municipality is very busy, building new state-subsidized houses. We don't want these houses because they don't have foundations. Just concrete, only concrete without uh, trenches, mm. yes, underneath, so it's just a uh, concrete only. They say it's 32,000 rand, and we don't believe that. Yes, as you can see, these are too small for that amount. For what we want is a breakdown sheet that states clearly uh, how much was taken from that 32,000 buying bricks, buying tiles, and all the stuff 
so so that we know at the end what what is the residual so that's what we need to know as the community it's our right yes and how have you had any luck getting that breakdown no when you ask uh, questions like that they just deny you they just come to tell you that we are putting these houses whether you like it or not they just put it and they put it it just in front of your house no no not where you want it to be built they just built it wherever they want it to build it these people have their old township house and now in their front garden they have a new reconstruction and development house this house was never built on 32,000, this one. So that means this one is not 32,000. If we were given vouchers, we would renovate the house that we have, rather than having many houses. The government of the apartheid era knew that a person needs to live in a four-room house. But the government of this time is building two-room houses. How can you live with your whole family in that two-room house? We want to know who passed this plan. These are the houses we voted for. This is the democracy we were fighting for. The freedom we fought for. Yes. Okay. We are not aiming at undermining the current government. But even the prominent members of the ruling party will definitely say this is, what, this is not what we fought for. So we are busy rolling up our sleeves in order to partner and engage the authorities so that they can see what we see, feel what we feel, so that they begin to understand the real issues. As from 1994 up until 2008, how many years now? 14 years. They should have done something. It's a, it's a political game because once we approach elections, do we start to get those big guns now, uh, trying to do some little stuff, but that little stuff now, which doesn't cost a lot of money in terms of the real money that has been allocated to them. We are understanding the game now. Yeah. So we are a shake dwellers movement, which consists of all the party supporters who are loyal to the DA, who are loyal to the INCATA, who are loyal to the ANC. So what we only need is a change. But from that change, beware that there is a revolution at the end if you fail to deliver and people discover the game of political gimmicks. Down at the beachfront, the work of creating a world-class city goes on. It would be a shame if the only people who benefited were tourists and soccer fans. But the recent Elimination of Slums Act appears to tell shack dwellers the city doesn't want them. Abashlalia challenging the new law in the courts, saying it's unconstitutional. We understand that the idea is to draw more investment in the cities by chasing the poor people away. This new legislation makes it crime to build shack. It makes it crime to resist demolition and eviction. So we fear, therefore, that if we can allow this act, we will have a situation where it becomes criminal to be poor in South Africa. So we will fight and we will defend our right to cities. Because fighting and defending our right to city will mean that we fight and defend our right to life. <laughs>